Hello, guys. Thank you very much for joining in. Hi, this is Ganesh Naik. I help finance professionals and students to excel in their career and become a better version of themselves. And I also help students preparing for the FRM and CFA exam. Today, we have with us one of our students who has been able to clear the FRM level one exam in November 2022. She's going to be talking about her journey, her challenges, what all, how she was able to manage her uh, preparation along with job. And all of these interviews that I'm doing, the main purpose of it to make sure that students who are preparing on their own, they need motivation, they need guidance. So by looking at these journeys, they will be able to get those inputs in their preparation and they will also be able to clear the exam. So with this, let us start with the discussion. Emily, thank you very much for taking out time and we are talking very early morning today. So that's very, uh, very nice of you to join us for the discussion. And for the benefit of the audience, if you could tell us when you started your preparation and when you started, what was your background in this sense? What were you doing at that point in time? First of all, thank you so much, sir, for having me as well here. Uh, so I started my preparation in June 29. I'm basically an agri graduate and then I did my MBA and I'm working in a public sector bank for almost eight years now, sir. Okay. So no finance background, as the education background was agri, agriculture related, right? Agri and then I did my MBA, sir. MBA. Okay. So you would complete your MBA, then around eight years of work experience in a public sector bank. Eight years and of then, experience. And then you started your preparation in June 2022. Now, when you started, did you had yes, did you had any fear about any particular book? Yes, sir. Definitely, I had fear about quads <laughs> because I had dropped my studies like around 2011. I completed, and I was not sure that whether I'll be able to clear it. I think in our first introduction as well, like when I called you, I was asking this very same question, sir: whether quants will be heavy, whether I'll be able to get through. And you were able to properly guide me, and I was like, okay, uh, let me give a try. That was my initial phase when I joined. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, you you took us took our video lectures to prepare now. What was the uh, flow or I mean the sense how many how many hours in a daily basis you were preparing from June 29? Uh, so June 29, I started, but I would say continuous preparation, I started around July 10th, I would say, because I was wait when I started your lectures, I found you are using Schweizer book. So I had ordered for that at that I, around 10, I started uh, like Paka. Uh, then uh, from then onwards, I would say minimum of two hours, minimum of two hours and maximum it used to extend to three, three and a half even and weekends it used to get even more. Okay, okay. So every day from office managing family, two to three hours you were dedicating consistently. Yes, was, sir. was there any disruption in this? I mean, in the sense, were there any days you were not able to study or any week you were not able to study? Yes, sir. Definitely it used to be because I have two small kids and uh, with them like almost like when hospitals and other emergencies used to come, I had to drop. But what I used to do is that when I had to drop on one day, like even like what you said, no, I used to maintain my notes and I used to make sure that minimum of 30 minutes I used to read whatever be the schedule. And uh, because you always used to tell that you should stick on to and something you should do. So I used to keep up that minimum 30 minutes. I used to do some kind of reading. And then I used to make sure that of day, if I'm not able to maintain the time, then next day I would put extra hours so that weekly somehow I'll be able to maintain the same schedule. Got it. Got it. Now, when you were preparing, so did you follow the Excel which was provided by us or you did you deviate it yes, from sir. Yes, sir. From uh, like, I was not able to stick on to the weekly, like sometimes you say that five chapters a week, maybe one or two times I used to get lagged behind for the week. But I was able, I was going on with the entire schedule, as you said, correctly, because okay. there were linkages between the chapters and what you told it was guiding like very nicely because from there I could get the link to the next one like that. It was like I was following completely the schedule you gave. Okay. And so you were watching the video, you were reading the textbook and you were also making your notes. Now, yes, did, you, did you solve the question bank immediately or you took some gap and then solved Yes, sir. What happened is initially, as you said, I was like, uh, first when I started, I was solving the questionnaires in the weekends. Then what happened is that in between, I felt like I won't be getting time. So I skipped the questions in the end. 
then when i spoke to you you told me no it would be better option so then uh, like when i compared between the chapters before which i did at the weekend and which i did not compare i just glanced through back then i found the initial one which you guided me that was the correct so again i came back around the second okay. month and i came back to the initial schedule and from then okay. i continued and whatever i skipped also i completed in between so you were watching the videos on the weekdays 2 to 2 hours every single day or 3 hours basically yes. and on weekends only solving is it correct only solving and like sometimes if i'm not able to complete some videos that also i used to cover up with the weekends okay and on an average how much time you were giving on weekend uh weekends i would say 6 to 7 or more even okay okay 6 to 7 is a good number so now okay. when when was the time or which oh, if you know if you remember the date that you completed your entire watching of the curriculum that means all the videos and solving of the question bank uh, i would say around october 24th if i correctly remember the dates sir october 24th i think 24th okay and you had completely solved the chapter wise questions yes. that were there that was provided right yes sir, yes, sir. okay and what was your exam yes, date yes sir uh, november 14th sir so from 24th to 14th okay, 14th around... Yes, around twenty days, twenty twenty five days. What 20, were you doing in that? Yes, sir. sir, what I started is like on twenty fourth or twenty fifth. I started with your crash course videos. To be honest, okay. And okay. entire video, I was like going through. I was keeping my book in front. I will post the videos in between. I was going through because there you had made it very clear and crisp for us people who have already seen your initial videos. It is very helpful. so i was like okay. okay i was keeping that videos in front i was going through the book i was seeing the videos also quickly and i think almost by uh, november 10th i heard the whole videos again i went through all my notes and i went through the books also once so wherever like i found that okay in between i had got stuck or something like uh, questions i had marked and kept in your question bank those also i had revised during that time okay so basically one full revision of the entire content one full revision of the question bank also till 10th yes, 10th of november and after that uh, mock papers did you saw mock papers mock papers what happened is that actually i started with the mock papers but then initial one i think i uh, did two days three days back the exam so when i did before the exam like i got score low and then i was like are whether i will be able to clear and i rang you one day morning <laughs> then you told me okay it is never if you have not completed go with the garp mock papers and try for one so i had just done as you said one garp paper recent one and one mock paper that is only one then so, again the rest of the time i went back and revised your entire uh, like questions whatever i had highlighted the same things i was going through i didn't do any other extra so when you solved the first mock paper what was the score uh, roughly you got in that uh, i got paper. 47 47 yeah. only yeah. i got And so then I was like, whether I'll be clearing or not. So that triggered the fear in me, and whatever confidence I had, I felt going low. That's when I told you. Okay. Uh, when you solved the GARP mock mock paper, what was the score that you were getting? GARP paper, I was able to get through, sir. I got fifty-seven. Now, when you went for the exam, you started solving. What was what happened in that first one hour? Ah, uh, sir, I don't know God's grace, luck, or guidance, whatever it is. I was happy because I got the first seven questions, which were very well known to me. So that boosted my confidence. I would say first seven was completely whatever I look. Okay, just in a glance itself, I was able to make out like theory only, but uh, theory questions only, but very well known concept, and I was able to easily rule out. Okay, this is my answer. so when that seven was happened so i was in that move and like okay in between there were questions but with the first hour i was able to manage 30 questions wow okay and 30 confidently you were able to solve that 30 yes a 30 not fully confident but majority of the questions were like what i have seen in the question banks what i have already known the concept which you told that you should uh, like uh, be very clear on and we normally mark double star at all no in your books like while you yes. do you say this is important Both concepts only it will mainly touch so i was confident in that okay okay and then uh, what happened how many theory and how many calculation questions came overall 
say like uh, 75 to 80 would be theory, I would say, sir. Not pakka theory alone, but there will be a mix, but uh, mostly theory. And 20, I would say that uh, numerical base, sir. And those numericals, you were able to solve those numericals properly? Uh, out of the numerical, I would say 10, 10 to 11, I was very confident. But the other one, probability and mixing came up, then I felt it difficult, sir. Okay, okay. And what about the theory? Like, 75. And, uh, yeah, yeah. The 75 uh, theory or mix of theory and calculation, what is that status in those questions? So out of 75, I would say that 15, almost 15 to 20, I was like, okay, two options I was stuck at. But even then, because the concepts were almost there, I was able to rule out. But okay, 15 to 20. But other than that, I felt okay, sir. Questions were easy and moreover covered like that, I felt. Okay, so did you, I mean, just a point which I wanted to understand. Uh, you had gone through Swager how many times before the exam? Initially along with you while uh, reading the this one. And in the weekends while doing the questionnaire, I don't used to read the, read the full Schweizer book again. But wherever we mark, you tell double star and all those markings, no important ones. Those yes. things I used to read along with the, in the weekends. And then again with the uh, like crash course, I told now last what you had provided. Mm -hmm. Along with that, I was reading once again. So roughly two and a half time. Two and a half time, two you and have done it completely. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, sir. So does, does reading Swager from your experience, did that help you to pick up or choose the option in the exam? Yes, sir, definitely. Because I was also initially, I think many times I had asked you whether we should refer GAR, whether we should go for BT, all this. I was asking in between, in between. But I would say after my first level, I would say that uh, Schweizer is completely sufficient. That's what I feel. Because I don't find, I didn't find even a single question which I couldn't like make out the concept. Like some things like numerical, as I said, that because level of mixing and all those between the questions or concepts happen. So it takes time. That also we'll be able to clear if we get longer time, but constraint of time is there. Otherwise, I don't think, sir, I think 100% percentage I would be sufficient. And did you face time issue in the entire exam? Four hours, 100 questions. Were you able to do it properly? Four, I was able to make out, sir. Oh, I okay. had enough, like almost 10 minutes I had uh, at the end to go back and see whatever, like uh, you had told it to write down the question numbers where you were not uh, confident. Yes. So I had done that on the rough paper. So those questions alone, I was going back and revisiting and I was uh, able to, like there also, whatever I had doubts and some questions, what I felt is that the answers will be coming back somewhere in the next question, somewhere I was able to like, okay. Uh, it is coming. So like that also, I was able to make one or two, I felt. Okay, got it, got it. Now, uh, when you came out of the exam center, was there any number in your mind that, okay, I've got this much right, this much wrong? I expected minimum 60 to 65. That was my guess. Wow. But even okay. then, okay, being uh, multiple choice questions, I was not that overconfident because we don't know what will happen because, okay, I have made my this one. Concept-wise, I was feeling like, okay, 60, 65. But anyway, after the results, I felt okay. Okay. And then what are the quartiles that you have got now? I have got one, three, one, three, sir. So book one, first quartile, book two, third quartile, book three, first quartile, yes, and the book four, third quartile. Okay. So this is a very good score because book, book three and book one. Okay. Book three is slightly tough to get a first quartile. Frankly speaking, it is not easy because a lot of people, they prepare very well in book one, book three, because it's market related okay. and it's easy to pick up. And book one, getting a first quartile is tough because it is very theoretical because you get questions related to culture, you get questions related to enterprise risk management and all of that in big, big questions in the exam, ideally. So wonderful. I mean, and what has been the reaction of people now around you? Once you've completed and cleared the exam. So now I'm working in regional office level in a public sector bank in risk management department only. So most of my circle is also people who are into risk management and uh, risk management department. So the response was quite overwhelming. Everybody was so happy. And there are so many people who ask like how it is that, where, like mm. how to do, like so many people in. And everybody is so happy. Every Even family, everybody around is so happy. And the kind of response you get will make you feel that, okay, you should go for level two as soon as possible. 
<laughs> and so practically you completed everything in 4 months july august september yes, october and the november few days now okay. okay. so what is what is your uh, if you, if somebody ask you give me three tips to prepare for the exam frm level what would be those three tips from your side uh, sir i would say the first one should be time management see everybody okay. has their own uh, constraints and all those things but how you manage the time see i might be having eight hours time but if i'm utilizing only two hours properly it doesn't make any sense mm -hmm. so how you manage your time even if you have two hours only stick on to what you like make a plan stick on to and be like uh, if it is with you means you can go up with the uh, excel what you have provided try to keep on with the schedule uh, yeah. okay how somehow you have to manage the time that is a keep some sacrifice or do some sacrifice for the time being so that right. when the result comes you will feel so happy The second point I would say is uh, consistency in preparation. Daily something mm -hmm. or the other, because once you lose the track in between, like four or five days, you go on a holiday, you don't touch a book at all. I feel that next day when you come back to studies, you will find again an adjusting time. So uh, okay. always consistency with your tape. And what mistake I had done after when I analyze now is, like formulas, whenever you tell double star and all those in the books, I used to write it on the book, but never I used to take care. Like that time I'll do the questions. If I have doubt, I'll go back and look on the book. Like memorizing the formulas, I had not done that much. And so in the last 10 days, I would say I had terribly suffered because I was trying to memorize it. Okay. And I felt like I'm not. So still onwards, I would advise someone that write the formulas keep going through the formulas again and again so that by the time of exam, even in sleep, if somebody asks you, you should be able to tell the formulas. So then you will be able to crack more numericals. That's what I felt. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Emily, this is uh, very, very interesting. I mean, uh, looking at your journey, four months preparation, working in a public sector bank, uh, having a, a family to manage and taking out two, two hours every single day is not easy. And you've been able to clear this exam with a very good quartile. So definitely this journey, this interview is going to be motivating for a lot of students, especially bankers, because bankers, the major problem I, I have seen that they don't get time because of their hectic schedule. So once they get time, they and yes, they get they are dedicated. Good. Yes, they, they will be able to clear this exam. And I think so this interview will motivate a lot of other students to also pick up book and start preparing for the exam. So thank you very much for sharing your journey and talking to us. Thank you so much, sir.